Now let's go into the market, okay? Now I wanna make this distinction very, very clearly here. We did not choose the market first and then find the dream customer. You found the dream customer and now we're gonna figure out the markets that they're already going to. Then that, you just meet them there, okay? That's a, that's a big, big piece of this. Uh, to illustrate this point here, um, I was a daughter of a sales guy, like a shaved head, oh, yeah, <laughs> killing it. <laughs> I'm totally losing my hair. I'm definitely going to go back to that, but it'll look more bad with the beard, so it'll be good. <laughs> um, when I was a daughter of a sales guy, um, I spent all my time... In fact, Ryan, where are you? Oh, what's up? This is my trainer, all right? So I went and I begged Ryan Jones to drop me off in the poorest neighborhoods because I figured out that I, had, I learned how to sell all these poor neighborhoods. And I, uh, and I felt like I got the script down. And guess, guess who also, um, oh, I should say this, other sales guys don't really go to those neighborhoods, right? So it was very ripe for the picking. And I was walking around and I was selling, I was selling, I was selling. And in the first like two months before I figured out what the internet was, I, was, I got to be one of the top guys for a little while. And I, I, contracts just flying in like crazy. It was so cool. I was excited about it. And then I learned what the internet was and get really distracted and a lot of stuff happened. But for the first few months, right, it, were, it was awesome. And um, at the end of the summer, uh, in fact, Ryan kept trying to tell me, he's like, he's like, dude, let me drop you off on some other better things. And, and I was like, no, 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 no. And it's because I was freaked out. I was too afraid to go charge um, more money. At the end of the summer, I was excited. We had spent five months, five, like think about that, five months selling. And I go and I go to the mailbox for this final check that comes in. And I open up the mailbox inside the mailbox for the five months of work was $1,100. And I thought that there was a huge mistake. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you just paid me that. I don't think I actually earned it in here. <laughs> but, but I called Ryan and I said, dude, there's, there's more, this is just the first part, right? Like there's more coming. He's like, no man, that's it. I was like, what? For five months of work? Oh my gosh, what is wrong? And he goes, dude, you spent the whole summer selling poor neighborhoods. Okay, now if you're unfamiliar, who here did door-to-door -door sales? Anyone see door-to-door? Nice, okay, yeah, right? Door-to-door, -door, usually the way it works, uh, I was selling pest control, we were in Salt Lake, and the first bill happens like pretty much right there, and then they come back on like a month or two to do it again, and then it's quarterly, okay? So I had gone and we had done like the first bill, which I, that's what I was selling on. The second rebill, what do you think happened? Tons of cancellations. I was in a poor neighborhood. Okay, and then the next quarterly thing happened. What do you think happened again, though? Again, boom, gone. Okay, now I did find some awesome dream customers in that market or neighborhood, but mostly those kinds of people that it was good for me as a salesman were not in that market or neighborhood. Does that make sense? This is a huge piece to understand. And this was one of the most painful lessons I had ever learned, uh, but it, it stuck so hard. I need to go learn how to sell in rich markets, okay? Rich markets, good products, good offers die in poor markets. We had an amazing product. I was actually pretty good at the script, right? And usually, the reason I'm bringing this up is because how many of you guys right now, you already know your offer is pretty good, right? And people will go out and they'll start selling and selling and selling and selling and selling and they'll be like, oh man, no one's buying it. And they go back to the offer when usually they're going to the wrong market. And that's typically the issue. Just change the market. The thing is already fine that you're selling. Make sense? Any ahas? So much easier to go pull it off this way. And this is where I learned that. It was one of the most valuable lessons I've ever learned in my whole life. Um, so I wanna teach you guys three things to choose a market. Okay, three, three things that I use to go choose a market. <clears throat> this first part actually came from my dad. My dad and I, uh, we paid 30 grand to Robert Kiyosaki um, like nine years ago uh, to go do his stock trading. So we go and we start doing stocks and options trading and I got really into the financial, financial markets for a while and I thought that's what I was gonna go do in college for a little while. And um, we were being trained on the New York Stock Exchange and we were, he was doing, uh, my dad did a lot of options stuff and I was doing more stocks things and then, um, it kind of progressed. And when I got married and I started doing a whole bunch of other businesses and things like that, I um, <clears throat> started talking to my dad a few, few years later. And he goes, yeah, hey, guess what? I'm no longer trading the NYSE. I said, oh, really? Because that's what we were trained on. It's like, why'd you switch? He goes, well, I do Forex now. 
I said, why do you do Forex or foreign exchange? He goes, because the pie is so much larger. I don't have to be as good to make more money. Big principle, okay? The New York Stock Exchange does an average of $1.69 billion a day, right, in transactions, that's in 2013. Forex, 5.3 trillion in a day. The pie was so much larger, there was so much more noise, the market was so much larger, that he didn't need to be as good or as married to it in order to make a lot more money. Make sense? Market selection is the exact same thing, it's the exact same principle. The only thing I get nervous about when we're like, what's your niche, what's your niche selection? Like, I don't really get into that game. I don't want niche. I want big, massive, highly competitive, very bloody red ocean. It's the opposite of what I was taught in college. You're like, oh, there's a lot of competition there. Good, that actually represents security. It means there's habits. Habits are the most expensive thing to change in people. There's habits already of people installed of them to go to that massive market. I just gotta learn how to interact with it. And the market will pull people to it for me. I don't have to go figure that part out. Okay, now I just want to market this freaking giant. Okay, absolutely massive. Now ClickFunnels is my marketplace. It's a location. Um, and uh, uh, now I just go there and they attract my customer for me. Okay, <clears throat> so principle number one with this is that you have to choose a massive rich market. Okay, helpful? Second piece. Okay, and that's the reason why I was saying don't, I want to go sell college students. How big is the rich market in college students? It's not big or rich, right? It's big, it's not rich, right? It's gotta be two, those two things there. So I would switch to the baby boomers, wherever you are, or something that's much larger. Um, second principle here. Um, now this is a story that I wrote in that Expert Seekers chapter for Russell's thing. And uh, we were, I said, okay, here's the scenario. You wake up in a village and you sell fish. I know some of you guys have heard this, but you sell fish. And your family is dependent on you selling those fish that day. Let's say you're out of money, okay? You wake up in a village, you live in this village, and you are a fisher person, a fisherman, and then you, you wake up that morning. Where do you go to sell your fish? The market. The market place, right? So you stand up, and you're going to go to the market place. I'm saying that because in college, they always ask, like, who's your dream market? It's not a who, it's a place. A market is not a person, it's a location, okay? One market, I'm gonna choose one market. I'm gonna go to where all the people in the village already congregate. Too many times we say, I haven't found my blue ocean yet. Ha, huh. it takes a lot of work to build a new market, right? Change people's behaviors and habits to go to a new location. I'm not gonna go stand over by where nobody is for the sake of being a blue ocean and be like, how come no one's coming to me? They're not in the habit of going there. Right? I'm gonna go to the red market, highly bloody red ocean where everyone already goes to, the market itself, where everyone's already moving and then go there. That's why I say you always have two markets. Your first market is the red ocean. And it takes forever. I mean, ClickFunnels, I, in my opinion, just barely got deemed as a market for funnels. And they have 400 employees and make, I mean, you, know, you see what I'm saying? The momentum that it takes to build this is huge. So I want an offer that's new but I'm not gonna go walk away to where nobody is yet. I'm gonna sell it back to where everyone is. Make sense? Massive hack to the game, it's huge hack to the game, okay? Otherwise, I mean, you gotta have like A-level marketing skills in order to get people to come walk out to you to a blue where nobody is, okay? So market is not a person, it is a location. Um, again, in college, they'd always be like, who's your target market? Ugh, incorrect. It's, a, it's like when my wife and I would wake up, we put our kids in the car, and we would go to the farmer's market, that's the point. We'd go downtown to the Boise farmer's market where buyers and sellers are used to congregating just for fun, we'd go to the farmer's market. But I'm not the market, so I went up and I went to the market. You're looking for a dream customer, right, out of a group of people that's already going to the same spot. And it's the same thing online as it is offline. Where are my people going? Click funnels. Where are my people going? Funnel hacking life. So what will we do? We will put an event two days beforehand across the street, that's why we did it, okay? That's, that's, so that's me running this exact play. <clears throat> so again, it's where is your market and who's your dream customer that's already going there? And that was the issue, is that when I was doing the door-to-door -door sales, it's not that there weren't people who were qualified to keep the pest control out of selling them. There weren't enough people qualified to keep the pest control out of selling them in the poor market or neighborhood. Is this helping? So much easier when you, when you run it this way, okay? 
Um, next principle here. This is the third one. Uh, I grew up skiing like crazy. I grew up in Denver, and um, <clears throat> this is Vail. Any skiers? Anyone go to Vail or Denver? And uh, yeah, oh my gosh, so fun. I miss it terribly. Um, growing up, all we wanted was ski passes for Christmas. We'd go like 30 times in a season. <laughs> and um, I, was, I lost my toenail on that one. <laughs> anyway, we went and, uh, squirrel, sorry. Okay, bring it in. <laughs> news story. Stop the news story. Okay. Um, you know, the ski village is really, it's about an hour and a half away for us to drive up to Vail. Vail's about two hours, actually, for us. Um, so we drove about two hours up, and it was always interesting to me to see these beautiful ski villages that would get created, and then over a few years, a lot of them would just kind of just start looking like ghost towns, and they start withering up and dying and get really run down, and people would see, still keep going to the big ones like Vail or Breckenridge or Keystone, some of these massive other big ones that have been around for a while. That's the key point, okay? And <clears throat> what I realized is that there were these massive, so what's the difference between one of these ski towns where, where they kind of started petering out versus one that had actually sustained and has been around for a while and made a huge name for itself, like Vail. Everyone knows Vail, right? What's the difference? The difference is this right here. This is a huge piece. And this is why I believe ClickFunnels is a market. It's made a market out of funnels. It's not just a company, okay? customer collection versus customer creation. Vail learned how to create customers out of people who were never planning on being a customer. Okay? These other smaller ones, they didn't learn how to create customers. They were just kind of collecting existing skiers that were enthusiasts. Okay? So what's cool about the One Funnel Away Challenge, let's, let's apply this to the ClickFunnels thing a little bit here. What's cool about the One Funnel Away Challenge is that we get so many people coming into this space who are entrepreneurs from other markets, you know, Shopify, Wix, right? Coming on in from other markets. They kind of maybe heard about funnels a little bit, but they really want some help pulling it off. And what it's done is it's created a consistent click funnels buyer out of people who frankly are never planning on being one. Okay, creating a customer is way harder than collecting a customer. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a market that's been around long enough that's huge, has a lot of money inside of it. It's been around long enough that it's learned to make customers out of people who are not planning on being one, right? Why aren't Beanie Babies or Pogs or Kmart around anymore? They stopped learning how to create customers. Why does something like Beanie Babies explode for a while and then leave? What would you think? They ran out of people. They were collecting existing customers of people who were eligible to buy something like that. And then when they run out of people on their one-off purchase, it starts to die. They didn't find new buyers. I suddenly, I'm never gonna be in the pink Volkswagen market. It's never going to be, right? <laughs> never, not gonna happen, right? For me, I'm just, and unless they can learn how to create a customer out of me, let's say they started running out of the current buyer base, pink Volkswagen is gonna die. <laughs> See what I'm saying? I want you to understand that these markets are living, breathing, moving machines where new people are being brought in. Why does the MLM market continue to, to exist? They keep, selling the dream. they keep selling the dream. And people who are never planning on being a customer, traditionally, are now customers. From friends and family, right? In the traditional sense, like, oh, I'll just help you out. Oh, man, you're keeping the MLM alive. Thank you, right? Does that make sense? And then you guys get into secret MLM hacks, and I'm like, hey, let's go and let's learn how to grab people who are already wanting to be a customer, already frustrated, all things that we're going through right now. Okay. Is this making sense? And so you have to understand that we, uh, for, for a while, there was like, what's your market? What's your submarket? What's your niche? It was like, oh, gosh. Understand that a market does, like, there's not that many of them because most of them die. After a while, a market will get all the customers from the easy buys, all the easy beanie baby pogs purchases. They're the equivalent of that. And then as soon as they start running out of the customer base and stop collecting, they don't learn how to create and then it just goes out of business. Okay. And only the markets that have learned how to create customers. I keep saying it, but I'm trying to like really make this stick. Does this make sense? You guys getting that? Okay, this is a big part. So that's why when I saw One Funnel Way come out and I was one of the coaches, right? And I started seeing it work and I started watching what was happening and all of their numbers went up. 20% increase in overall app usage of all customers 
from OFA, right? New customers like crazy. I mean, it, it opened, basically, I got to ClickFunnels, there's only 14,000 users and there's 40 employees. I got there right before the explosive part. So it's cool to see what mechanisms in marketing and their business structure caused explosive growth. And so they would go and explode. And we, I remember we exploded, we were like, Poof, holy cow, 30,000 users? Oh my gosh, that's crazy, right? And 100 employees, I remember when we crossed that, it was like, oh, we're like legit. And I was sitting at a picnic table, that was my desk, right? <laughs> And they were just, that's how we did it, right? And then we get up to like the 60,000. ClickFunnels got stuck 60 to 70,000 for like a solid year and a half. And it wasn't until one funnel away, we grabbed another 20 to 30,000 people in like six months. It was like, boom, it exploded. That's when I was like, market, customer collection versus, or sorry, customer creation. I was like, oh my gosh. This is a sustainable market for me to choose to sell into and it will attract my dream customer to me. It's way easier. Help? Okay. Choose a market that's learned to create customers for you. And that's the big key is that I only have to, while they are creating customers, I'm just collecting them. It's way harder to learn how to do the creation. So I'm just collecting because they're doing the creating. I'm just selling into them, waiting for the people to get frustrated. You guys good? <laughs> you guys doing all right? Yeah. A little breather, a little boogie dance or something? <laughs> what was most helpful there? Rich customers. Rich customers. 100% rich customers, yeah. What else? Where, not who. Where, yeah, exactly. Where is the market, not, the who, not who's the market? No one's there, right? Yeah, no, no one's at the blue ocean. By definition, it, does, it doesn't exist. Clay Christensen, uh, brilliant Harvard uh, professor, just passed away a few weeks ago, actually. Um, he, he wrote a book called Innovator's Dilemma, and that was the dilemma. It's like, he said, markets that don't exist can't be analyzed. So he goes, how can you go build a sustainable business off a of blue ocean? You can't. <laughs> That's not there. It doesn't exist. Instead, you build it off of the red. That's where all your people are, and it fuels the blue over time, 